Let's now implement some neural network workflow in uh, Julia. So above all, uh, we set up the environment as usual. In this example, we will not run cross validation to find uh, the optimal uh, hyperparameter of the uh, neural networks. The process will be exactly the same as we saw in the previous lesson with the perceptron. Instead, we will focus on creating the neural network modules, train the, the, mo the model, and uh, uh, evaluating the, 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 pr the predictions. Uh, so uh, we'll have uh, we'll use two different libraries for uh, uh, general classification and regression. We will use BetaML, and uh, for convolutional uh, neural network, we will use instead the Flux uh, library. So let's gonna start with uh, uh, a binary classification. So here uh, we have uh, some data, and uh, the label is uh, uh, is. Uh, zero or one, we have only two class and we have to determine the, the label. So what do we have here? First here we have, uh, we are reading the data. The data in this case is a CSV that is in the BetaML package. So we are loading. This will be a, a matrix, uh, a matrix of, uh, um, with, uh, uh, with three column and uh, the, um, and the, uh, is not, uh, if I remember, is not sorted. So here, what we are doing is we are shuffling all the rows, and then we are uh, uh, we are uh, um, taking the same data but shuffled. So all column, but at this at this shuffled uh, index of rows. Basically, we are shuffling by by rows. So. Here I am with X, I'm taking the second and the third column, all the rows, second and third column. So here will be my, my future matrix. And here I'm doing these strange things because um, the, uh, if I take the data here, the data, the, the Y is a minus one and the plus one, while well, I want it in terms of zero one. So I am uh, taking the, the maximum between zero and, uh, and the value. And uh, I'm taking uh, the results uh, is converted to a zero one uh, vector of, uh, of integer. After I have this, I can use the function partition. So I'm gonna take 70% uh, for uh, uh, training and 30% uh, for testing, or more correctly, I would say for validation here, because we have only two, two sets. Uh, I'm taking, I have two, uh, two um, matrix, I have a matrix and an array, uh, X and Y, so in this way, I'm loading uh, several uh, arrays and then uh, I can get them partitioned in the same way, keeping the correspondence, of course, that the nth element of X corresponds to the nth element of Y. So I return a tuple of with all many number of elements as how many, here I, how many, um, uh, how many matrix I have. So this is two because uh, I have X and Y here. And then here, each element itself is uh, a tuple with how many number of, uh, of uh, arrays as I am partitioning them. So uh, the first tuple is given by the number of arrays that I'm giving as first argument to partition. And uh, each element here is given by the num number of partitions that they want. So here uh, we are going to run a neural network in the most simple possible way. Uh, we are going to hide the, the complexity and then we are going to see what there is behind here. So let's go and try to make it without putting any, any argument, just the bare minimum. So our feature matrix is two dimensional. So our first layer has to start with uh, two nodes and we are going to give it some flexibility and uh, give uh, an uh, output layer of uh, five and uh, we take the hyperbolic tangent 
as activation function. Then our second layer will have as input the number of, of uh, neurons as uh, the previous layers, fives. And uh, in this case, we don't change the, we keep five as well. And we keep the ReLU uh, activation functions. Finally, we define a further layer where the input is five, the, the output of the previous one. And the, because this is the last uh, layer, the the dimension or in output uh, is only one because we are interested in a scalar and the function that we want is a sigmoid because it has to return uh, values in the zero one range so here we are pretty we we, we have is the it's defined the, the function the activation function that we need to use is defined by the kind of labels that we have so here we have defined three layers. At this time, we can build our network. And as um, uh, cost functions, we give squared cost. So this is nothing else than the L2 norm, but already divided by two. So we don't need to, when we, um, when we take the derivative, we don't need to divide by, by two, but is the L2 uh, norm. So at this point, we have defined the neural network. We can train it. And the way we do is we train the model we give here with, with our X train and our uh, labels. And we should get here. OK, it take a little bit of time to because here we didn't specify the, the derivative. So it's using automatic differentiation. So it's using the zygote passage uh, package. So it need to, to compile it. And uh, uh, so it's the first time it's going to take a few seconds more. And uh, uh, you will see here that he will, after a while, he will train the 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 neural network okay so here it done you can see here uh, so it by default it gives some information on uh, the the value of the error at each uh, uh, at several uh, uh, epoch and uh, the results is seems pretty good let's gonna try it so after we have the, the, the model uh, that has been trained, we can make predictions. So here is the prediction on the training sample. Neural network, even if the scalar, the output is one, BetML uh, library return always a vector. So uh, we, uh, we convert each uh, element uh, to be a uh, to, to, to be a column vector so a column by all rows so here the, if i don't take this one i will have a matrix where 140 are the training uh, uh, records and here you can see that if it's a scalar but is encoded here as a as a matrix so i want to remove this uh, uh, this extra uh, dimension i have many way to to do it one way is to use the make call vector that transform uh, uh, a matrix in a, in a column and uh, uh, i want uh, uh, this one to be a prediction of zero one so this is a probability and uh, as you can see, again, is a is a number between zero and uh, one. So I just have to round it and uh, and uh, make it as a, as an integer, and the results will be a vector of zero, one, one, zero, and so on. I do the same for uh, the testing uh, set of data, and then I do not have anything else than compute the accuracy between my predictions and the true data. So when I do it under training, I have a 92% accuracy, accuracy and uh, I'm testing a little bit uh, less, but still a good one. So here the training took a little bit of 
time because it was uh, uh, using automatic de differentiation. But if I try do it again, you can see that it's very fast. It's taking a fraction of seconds. And uh, in particular, so using uh, uh, automatic uh, uh, differentiations uh, doesn't change. Uh, I did several try uh, tests. It changed very minimally, like 10% the difference in real training. The, the, mo the biggest problem is that it had uh, a fixed cost of uh, uh, 10, 20 seconds when you first uh, do the training. So this example was using uh, all the default arguments. Let's gonna see what there is behind here, what there is, which are the arguments that you can uh, specify. So we are going to do exactly the same model, but specifying um, all the arguments. So here we're using again the, tan the hyperbolic tangent and we're we are specify as uh, uh, df the derivative of the activation functions and betaml provide for the uh, for most uh, activation functions also the derivative so here we are manually specifying a derivative we are also giving here a, a particular uh, uh, um, a random number generator if you want to have uh, more fine control over uh, the stochasticity because when we are doing, sorry, uh, I didn't specify that when we um, create a layer also we do some initialization of this uh, uh, of the weights and this happens uh, randomly we can also pass them if we want if you are uh, uh, we can pass uh, them as as argument the initial uh, weights but uh, if you don't pass them they are uh, uh, randomly um, randomly chosen uh, using Xavier initialization uh, that is a technique uh, in use no uh, way to initialize the the weight and uh, uh, we can p if we want to have fine control over this we can uh, we can pass uh, a random number generator we do the same for the other two layers so we are always giving the functions and the derivative of the activation functions and here for the build network we give a name and also we provide the derivative of the cost function Okay, so we can uh, train again the network. Uh, before we train, we can define our own training uh, info that is a callback function. That is, it, it is called every dot, every step, not uh, depending on uh, which verbosity we, we use, but uh, we call the, um, these uh, callback uh, uh, functions and uh, with this parameter here and then the callback function can either uh, can define uh, uh, what to do uh, what to print as information so here is a copy of uh, uh, the actual uh, default training information if i want uh, uh, change here i can change it for whatever we want and now when i call with, uh, with uh, when I try and train the network I can specify with this parameter CB callback the function that I want to use to provide information so here let's stay a little bit here on this train function because you can see it has a lot of parameters so here is the parameter that we used the model of course the x and the y that we trained uh, the model with the number of epochs the size of the batch the fact if we need to make it uh, sequentially or not i don't know why i put here false because it's much better normally to to make uh, to make uh, uh, sequentially the so to, to shuff, shuffle at each batch uh, at, at, at each epoch sorry to shuffle at each epoch the the record the level of verbosity standard or non or whatever that we want the callback function that is the one here that we defined here and we can also choose the optimization algorithm uh, we can use the standard um, the standard uh, stochastic uh, um, gradient descent or we can use adam that is a more recent uh, algorithm and you can see here that again we could have uh, avoid writing 
written all the, these uh, things here, we would have used the default options for the uh, Adam algorithm, or here we can be split, explicit and type all the options that we want uh, related to, that are available for the Adam uh, algorithm. And again, we can uh, uh, provide, uh, if we want to fine tune the stochasticity, uh, we can pass a random number generator. So we do here, we do this train. You can see here that the, this rows here is my training because I changed it and I put my here. Where is it? Here. So, and uh, uh, we can uh, um, do the prediction in the same way we did earlier and compute the accuracy a little bit better because we choose the, some we did more epochs than the default, and I think also that we changed the bat, bat, si bat size, batch size. 